नमस्ते मनोरमा दीदी जी मनु दी नमस्ते अब आपकी आवाज आई आपका माइक दिख रहा था अनम्यूट हो तो है लेकिन आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही थी जी नमस्ते दीदी परीक्षित भैया हैं हाँ जी दीदी हैं अभी हमारे साथ ही हैं जी बस थोड़ा सा वो आवाज नॉइजी प्लेस में है अभी पेरुमल भैया ने ज्वाइन नहीं किया ना बात जी है तो ज्वाइन करने ही वाले होंगे वो और बताइए कैसे हैं आप लोग सभी बिल्कुल ठीक दीदी तारा भाई अभी हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए हैं तारा भाई नमस्ते नमस्ते दीदी नमस्ते सभी को नमस्ते मनोरमा दीदी नमस्ते हाँ, अभी भैया आपका स्वागत है भैया नमस्ते नमस्ते हमें ऑडिबल आपका ही इंतजार हो रहा था भैया अभी अटेंडीज भी ज्वाइन कर रहे हैं तो दो ही लोगों ने ज्वाइन किया है कर रहे हैं होंगे सब लोग जी भैया पिछले बार वाले सेशन को ही आगे बढ़ाएंगे हाँ हाँ यस ठीक है सो बिफोर अदर पीपल ज्वाइन इफ वी हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस एनी वन हैज एनी क्वेश्चन वी कैन टेक दिस क्वेश्चंस फिर अदर्स ज्वाइन लास्ट टाइम ऑल्सो समन बट आई कुड नॉट नोट इट डाउन एंड इट इज रिलेटेड टू द आयुर्वेदिक मेडिसिन रिलेटेड टू फ्रोजन शोल्डर सिचुएशन या बट लेट इज नॉट डिस्कस अबाउट द मेडिसिन पार्ट बिकॉज लेट इज नॉट डिस्कस अबाउट द मेडिसिन पार्ट okay bhai because medicine is something uh, which needs to be prescribed in a tailor made fashion it's not like same medicine for every disease or same medicine for every person same disease different constitution different medicine will work yes so we will focus on uh, those aspects where uh, um without medicine models we can do and yeah. what we can do to prevent different different conditions we will focus yeah. mainly on that if at all uh, a particular person needs consultation we will give them separately or if we are discussing about a specific uh, disease and the treatment process there we can discuss about various uh, um, medicines and their effect and uh, the right way to choose the right uh, system of medicine those things we can discuss when we are discussing about a specific disease जी या कट्टम राजु श्रीलता जी रेज्ड हर हैंड नमस्ते नमस्ते भैया नमस्ते लास्ट वीक सेशन वाज वेरी गुड अबाउट द ब्रीथिंग एंड राइट वे ऑफ दिस थिंग आई जस्ट वांट टू नो व्हाट इज द इनटेक ऑफ वाटर इनटू द बॉडी एंड व्हिच इज द करेक्ट टाइम means morning or afternoon or evening like that what quantum of water at what time for the general health this is one doubt i am having and one more is a uh, body is an instrument which should be used uh, correctly right uh, so uh, we have to exert so that whatever we intake it should be utilized used so there will be communication between the body and the self and that communication uh, give me rest give me rest like that it will be which is the correct one where we can stretch the instrument to the limit which can which it can bear is it by practice or is there any uh, indication or sensations like that 
beyond which the body needs to be given rest it is like a elasticity beyond which it will get into repair mode uh, so uh, am i am i able to convey my doubt bhaiya yes 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 i'll answer your second question first hmm so it's very important uh, for us to establish communication with our own body hmm and hmm. Uh, when we interpret the signals of the body in a right way with right understanding hmm. right knowledge we will yes. be able to see whether this uh, uh, pleads uh, pleads for uh, rest is it natural hmm. or unnatural normal or abnormal hmm. yes 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 so yes when you are giving it proper rest in the right time you are sleeping early getting up early and relaxing properly and you know that the hmm. time you have spent in sleep is giving you enough energy to spend hmm. the next whole day with full energy hmm. Hmm. then then uh, generally if that proper rest is given to the body it will not like, ask again and again for rest until you give it the next time in the next night but sometimes okay. when this rest which you have taken in the previous night is not enough or not proper or not fulfilling or some other hmm. ailment is draining away all the energy then hmm. it will again again and again ask for more rest hmm so If where right where it need, where it need to be snubbed no you can work yes it has to be put to work more it can it is having the potential to work more like that i am asking physically always we need to extend and stretch our strength and stretch our limits okay mm. but mm. again it should be done judiciously mm. some mm. people start with the uh, gym practice and they immediately go to gym and stay, stay for 2 hours 3 hours like that hmm. it's again a problem hmm. Hmm. but uh, incremental steps day by day if you take baby steps towards stretching your limits that is okay and when okay. your body is asking for rest you need hmm. to know whether this rest is normal or abnormal if you compare with others if you are doing some physical activity hmm. instantly you are getting weak you are becoming weak and body is mm. demanding for rest that is abnormal mm. there is a small change mm. in temperature mm. or small change mm. in the season immediately mm. body is asking for help, uh, rest it is abnormal mm. yeah, okay mm. there is a small stress small thing which mm. you are, have not anticipated something some mental stress immediately body is asking for rest or some kind of deviation it is abnormal mm. okay we need to understand that uh, your body is uh, uh, not in a position to tolerate simple physical strain or simple mental strain it needs more strengthening then you will uh-huh. work more on your own body if it okay. at the moment if it demands rest and if it is really not uh, able to handle anything you will give rest but then you will work uh-huh. on it in such a way that it will get proper rest proper nourishment proper activity so that uh-huh. it will not and abnormal rest abnormal uh, pleads for uh, help and all okay so okay all mm. boils down to establishing proper communication between body and self mm. and proper interpretation of the signals body is trying to convey okay okay if, if it is mm. asking for rest it doesn't mean that it is just asking for rest in the mm. in the cry for help it is conveying something else which we need to understand Hmm. Hmm. And hmm. this comes. This knowledge comes with continuous observation. Observation, yes, yes. Okay. Of course, yes, uh, we also need some uh, some more knowledge about uh, hmm. you know how to uh, interpret in the signals. Holistic human health syllabus. We have a chapter hmm. where um, we will be able to understand the signals initially when there is some disturbance. body will try to tell us with small small simple mm. simple signals mm. which indicate some future ailment which might come if you don't take care of the simple uh, problem yes. which is there right now so how mm. to mm. understand that that is uh, covered in the syllabus holistic human health and um, mm. the book is also getting printed holistic health is okay. getting printed so that mm. will be a syllabus book for all the first year students uh, who go through this uh, uh, course called holistic human health in the student election program mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Um, almost it is it got ready it will be published within 
one or two weeks okay this is the answer to your second question mm 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 first question about water so actually this is a again a huge topic big topic uh, but i'll try to mm. uh, answer it in a brief uh, this thing because uh, today we thought of uh, covering another topic so mm-hmm. the quantity of water can be decided keeping various factors in mind like uh, the kind of physical activity we do if we do mm-hmm. a lot of physical activity you need uh, more water if your constitution is hot constitution like pitta prakriti you sweat a lot mm-hmm. you he- feel heat inside mm-hmm. then you might need mm-hmm. more water mm-hmm. and if the season is a hot season then again you might need more water okay okay so there are uh, so many factors um which will um, de- you know decide the, the quantity of water you need to drink normally 2 mm-hmm. to 3 liter of water is enough okay unless you are doing a lot of physical activity which includes a lot of perspiration a lot of dehydration then you might go mm-hmm. up to just 5 liters okay but otherwise if you are sitting in a room and you are not going outside and working on a computer Mm, then mm. three liters of water will become more because you are not mm, perspirate mm. you are not doing any physical activity you are not losing any water then if you drink more water it will damage the system okay okay mm. so depending upon uh, your body constitution your occupation your um, uh, environment and the season mm, mm, mm. we need to decide and again depending upon all these things body will tell us whether we are thirsty or not body okay. it will send some signals mm. and we need to understand them that's all okay okay and uh, just you sit at the computer don't do anything and you just keep some three four bottles with you and uh, regularly you wash your time and drink water without even feeling thirsty that can cause a problem okay and okay. you are doing lot of physical activity you forget about drinking water and you go on doing wa- a lot of work and you don't drink water that will be a bigger problem hmm 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 so you need to be self aware observe what body is trying to communicate and also hmm. observe whether the whole day you did some physical activity or not whether you have you had perspiration or not whether some kind hmm. of uh, sweating happened or not some kind of physical activity happened or not depending on, upon that and depending upon the communication in the body you will decide how much water to take that is one thing mm. second thing is there is a custom or a tradition of drinking a lot of water early in the morning it is called ushapan yeah that is yeah mm. okay. so um some people recommend uh, drinking of 1 liter to 2 liters of water early in the morning after immediately after getting up from the bed Mm-hmm. even in ayurveda in bhav prakash samhita this uh, ushah pana was uh, um, mentioned mm. but they it was clearly mentioned that you need to drink eight anjalis of water anjali is like small uh, small uh, this okay. thing and some and some liter one uh, 1.2 liters mm. of uh, mm. water early in the morning in the brahmi muhurta time okay brahmi okay is before sunrise for mm. so this drinking of water should be completed we should complete the drinking of water thing before before uh, sunrise and uh, this was actually called a rasayana therapy rasayana therapy is something which will slow down the aging process rasayanam yad jara vyadhi nasanam it is not a therapy to empty your balls hmm hmm your stomach is full of uh, waste and uh, you drink a lot of water and put pressure and uh, it will be emptied mm. Mm. The, mm. for that reason this was not mentioned it was mentioned okay. to slow down the aging process okay and to mm. prevent diseases this is one technique drinking water before you uh, before the sunrise okay but in the same context it was also written that if you do the same thing after sunrise there will be some kind of disturbance in your metabolism because hmm. after sunrise you know the moment sun rises and uh, the sunlight touches your uh, eye hmm. the sub- suprachiasmatic nucleus inside your brain gets activated hmm. from the photons 
and it sends hmm. signals to each and every organ and they start working okay <laughs> particularly the enzymatic activity <coughs> will increase hmm and during that time you drink a lot of water all the enzymes will get diluted and it okay. will not help in uh, digestion of the breakfast to eat or it will cause some other problem some metabolic disorder mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it is not advisable to drink a lot of water after sunrise mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if thirsty you drink one glass of water two glass of water not one liter or two liters of water after sun okay. unfortunately mm-hmm. many people they get up after sunrise and then they drink a lot of water <laughs> which is not yes. right Yes, yes another important uh, question many people ask me and there is a um, debate surrounding it some people have a lot of doubts whether to drink water during food or not hmm. this is something which needs to be cleared um you know if we need to um, look at it, 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 it will dilute question. the bile juices like that uh, they'll tell ha huh. so we need to understand it from both aspects one a tradition mm. what tradition is saying to what science is saying hmm is also important because it is coming from thousands of years hmm and if the science validates the tradition great okay okay then it is more uh, accurate authentic authentic yes so when you do puja you give prasad to bhagwan hmm. we will do hmm. nivedana hmm. then we will say madhye madhye amrutpaniyam samarpayami achanne hmm. hmm. again and again you give little little water to the hmm. god while he is eating food eating hmm. okay so why is this uh, and what actually ayurveda says about it hmm. ayurveda says bhaktas yadav jalam pitam agni sadak prasangatam अंत कौति स्थूल ऊर्ध्व च आमाशय गध्ये मध्य गाम्यम धातूना जीर्ण सुत भक्त आद जल पीत अग्निसाद कृस अंगत इफ यू आर् ड्रिंकिंग वाटर बिफोर हाविंग फुड जस्ट बिफोर हाविंग फुड ए लॉट ऑफ वाटर इट विल डायल्यूट ऑल द एंजाइम्स एंड इट विल नॉट अलाउ द डाइजेशन टू टेक् प्लेस इन रईट वे इट विल नॉट अलाउ द न्यूट्रिय टू गेट अब इन द बॉडी प्रॉपरली it will hmm. result in mal nourishment of the body okay 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 second ante karoti stulatva moddham cha amasyam gatam if you drink water at the end hmm immediately after uh, having food if you drink a lot of water it will disturb hmm. the fat metabolism it will convert the whatever food you are eating into fat and it will increase obesity and other metabolic disorders hmm hmm okay मध्ये मध्ये गतम साम्यम धातु नाम जीर्णम सुतम इफ यू ड्रिंक वाटर इन बिटवीन लिटिल लिटिल वाटर दैट विल हेल्प इन बेटर डाइजेशन ऑफ द फूड सो हियर वी हैव द क्वेश्चन इज इट राइट और नॉट शुड वी ड्रिंक लिटिल लिटिल वाटर इन बिटवीन और नॉट वन सिंपल थिंग व्हिच एवरीवन अंडरस्टैंड्स लाइक इफ यू पुट पुट सम कोकोनट पीसेस इन अ mixy jar and uh, try to make chutney out of it without pouring water it will not become a pouring nice water taste. yes mm. only mm. small mm. part will not get you know stomach also tries to churn the food make it into a smooth paste so that it can easily yes. travel through the intestines mm mm-hmm. mm so it is very important for us to have both liquid and solid food solid food mm. if you are already taking liquids like rasam uh buttermilk sambar and all then mm. most of the uh requirement of liquid food is fulfilled but if you are eating only one roti and uh, um dal or curry then only solid mm. food you are eating you need to put little little okay. liquid food also water. like buttermilk and little mm. sips of water mm. otherwise not be well churned that is one point another point is suppose you are taking a typical south indian meal hmm. which contains many different different items like chitra annam pulihora then hmm. dal hmm. rice hmm. rice with uh, hmm. rice with curry rice with sambar rice with rasam rice with buttermilk then sweet different different items you eat and each item is unique one different item is alkaline taste. one item is acidic in nature one item is protein rich another item is carbohydrate rich another item is 
you know fat uh, rich and all different different items and uh, different different mm-hmm. items need different different kinds of enzymatic combinations this, like this you in your types. previous class you have you have told by a because that uh, brain will get the uh, and it has to send the signal and yes. different sort of enzymes need to be sent so, so don't mix the taste taste buds get coated yes. with one kind of yes. food and yes. they are not flushed yes. out the next kind of food mm-hmm. can this will not happen yes. so little mm-hmm. bit of water can be taken in between just sips of mm-hmm. water to flush out so the that taste buds taste so that the next be. food's chemical analysis will be will uh-huh. the information uh-huh. will be sent properly to the brain so that it will analyze okay. and it will yeah. send oh. so that is one thing uh-huh. so yes. this is about water there are so many other things which we will discuss when we cover water again so thank anything you. else thank you thank you so much bhaiya uh, i hope i have not disturbed the regular schedule whatever no no uh, this is more of uh, yeah yeah so today's schedule is a continuation of last week's uh, session where we discussed about breathing hmm. so we all know that uh, um, breathing is a very important part of our life air is oxygen is called prana and um, and uh, last time i spoke about utilizing our lung capacity in a right way so that we will take more oxygen use it to produce more energy but today i am speaking the opposite thing today what i am going to speak is about not taking a lot of air trying to hold it as much as possible trying to reduce the metabolism bring it down to as near as possible to zero so this is a technique which our ancient sages have uh, mastered to achieve greater things to do miracles and uh, we have celebrated recently on june 21st international yoga day in which pranayam is a very important part so today i'll speak about pranayam pranayam and uh, the benefits of pranayam and uh, easiest ways to practice pranayam and uh, i will also try to clear some myths and clear some doubts clear some uh, mis notions so that uh, we all can easily practice authentic ancient way of doing pranayam so pranayam we can, we when you uh, and try to understand the meaning of the word pranayam pranat ayamam pranavayu is oxygen we always take in and breathe out breathe in and breathe out it happens continuously ayamam is a pause a break in this busy schedule of breathing in and breathing out continuously you take a pause you hold the breath that is pranayam why should we hold the breath last week we have discussed that we need air we need lots and lots of air we are using only 20% of our lung capacity then why should we under utilize why should we hold the breath so here we are holding the breath we are stopping both inhalation and exhalation and we are trying to bring down the metabolism to almost zero where neither anabolism nor catabolism will happen neither construction part nor the destruction part will happen we are trying to bring it down to a stand still the whole metabolism inside our body comes to a pause when we practice pranayam and it's not just our body our chemical reactions our metabolism it's also about our mind they say chale vaate chale chittam nischalayetu nischalam and the air is going inside and coming out going inside coming out continuously your mind is also like a dia like a candle in air flickering like anything it is jumping from one thing to another thing to another thing and that thing without any kind of focus but when you make this air nischala no chala nischala you hold it then your mind also will be nischala it will be focused on whatever you want okay 
So how to achieve this state of nishchalatva in mind, nishchalatva in your metabolic activity? It is by practicing pranayama. And how do we do that? How do we practice pranayama? So uh, maybe someone can uh, make this screen big, make my video bigger so that I can show some mudras and all. If some host is there, you can uh, make my screen bigger. So here we need to understand various steps involved in the whole process called uh, Pranayama. Mostly in TVs or some yoga classes, they speak only about Kapalabhati, Nadi Shodhana, and Anulom Vilom, which doesn't involve holding the breath. It is mostly about inhaling and exhaling in a rhythmic way. It will help in increasing our lung capacity. It will also help in um, strengthening our lungs and uh, removing so many toxins through the air, to the breath. That is possible with these things. But ultimately, when you say pranayam, you need to hold your breath. So this holding part is called kumbhaka. kumbhaka. And uh, when you fill the air, filling the air is puraka. Puraka is filling. You are exhaling, you are breathing out. This breathing out is called rechaka. So, puraka is inhaling, kumbhaka is holding the breath, rechaka is exhaling. Then, after exhaling, after emptying your lungs, then if you hold the breath, it is called shunyaka. These, these are different different steps. In simple anlom vilom, we only do puraka and rechaka. We inhale and exhale. Again, inhale, exhale. This is simple anlom vilom. But we want to hold the breath. So, initial level of pranayam, we do only kumbhaka along with puraka and rechaka. Simple inhaling, holding the breath, and exhaling. Very simple. So, what happens? When you do this, holding the breath thing, when you hold the breath, as I've told you, the metabolism, if you, if you do it properly, it comes to a standstill. Your mind will be focused. Undivided attention can be achieved. You can tap the hidden potential just by holding your breath. So, now you can say, see, always we are inhaling, holding and exhaling and it's happening continuously. Is, is this not pranayam? 24 hours, 365 days, all life we are inhaling, holding breath and exhaling. This is happening. Yes, this is happening, but it is not happening in a rhythmatic way. When you say pranayam, there is a rhythm for it. There is rhythm for everything. There is a rhythm for our heartbeat. There is a rhythm for our brain waves. So similarly, there is a rhythm you need to practice while you are practicing pranayama. Initially, for our patients, particularly our patients, majority of them, they uh, have some degenerative diseases, some problems where cells are not act actively functioning, some cells are dying. In such conditions for regeneration of new cells, we teach this first level of pranayam, we teach three levels, we teach first level of pranayam where the ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 1. Puraka, Kumbhaka, Rechaka, the ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 1. I'll just show you how we do it. First thing is you need to keep your back straight. You should not sit like this. You should not, uh, um, you know, stoop your shoulders also. You can keep your shoulders back little. And you can bring your chest forward and your left hand, this is called chin mudra. Chin mudra, you keep this hand like this on your left thigh. Right hand, this is called pranayam mudra. You are bending your index finger and middle finger. 
you bend both these fingers with your right thumb you close your right nostril so you use this right thumb to close your right nostril you use both the other fingers to close your left, left nostril like this okay so this is the mudra we use to do pranayam normally so always you start with your left nostril in pranayam we generally start with the left nostril we close the right nostril first we empty our lungs whatever air is there we try to empty it first you exhale then you inhale then close both the nostrils then exhale through the opposite nostril right nostril again inhale through the right nostril close both the nostrils then exhale through the left nostril so this is one cycle you inhale hold exhale again inhale hold exhale one cycle is completed so here to start with we start with a simple ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1 you inhale and count while you inhaling you count suppose you count 5 then hold the breath and count 10 1 is to 2 is to 1 right to so double the count you will hold the breath then you exhale and you count 5 Again, while inhaling, you count five. Then hold the breath for ten. Count. Then in exhale for count of five. This completes one cycle. So now, this one is. to 2 is to 1 ratio is a very basic ratio and anyone can practice this you can start with 5 while you are inhaling you count 5 hold it and count 10 and exhale you count 5 anyone can do this if you feel that even 5 is a longer number you start with 3 while inhaling count 3 hold and count 10 as uh, 6 and uh, exhale count 3 again 3 6 3 So whatever number you are comfortable, you start with it. But the key here is to stretch your limit. If you practice for two three days with this count, one is to two is to one ratio, five ten five, then you stretch your limit. After two three days, you go to six. Oh, inhale for six, hold it for twelve, and exhale for six. Again, inhale for six, hold it for twelve, and exhale for six. Like that, you can slowly stretch your count. slowly slowly you will be able to inhale in a deep and long way and you will be able to hold for much longer period and exhale in a slow manner we encourage our patients to stretch their limit till they reach the count 15 while inhaling they'll count 15 hold the breath and count 30 Exhale, count fifteen. Again, fifteen, thirty, fifteen. This in our hospital, we say the, you have completed first level. So, if you inhale, hold, exhale, again inhale, hold, exhale, one round is completed. We recommend completing twenty rounds in whatever the count you are doing. use the same ratio if you can do then next you will uh, go to much bigger ratio 1 is to 4 is to 2 where you hold the breath for much longer period the key here is to hold the breath as much as possible as long as possible 
the second level if you are counting five while inhaling you hold the breath for 20 count four times what you have inhaled and exhale for 10 count 5 20 10 again 5 20 10 like that 5 20 10 again we encourage our patients to stretch themselves after doing five for a few days then go to six six 24 12 7 28 14 like that till they reach the time where 15 60 and 30 is the count of inhaling holding and exhaling till then we encourage them to do then we go to the third level where we also teach shunyaka shunyaka is something uh, proper monitoring but i can safely say that this inhaling holding and exhaling in a one is to two is to one ratio you can do it very safely without a fear of uh, doing any wrong thing or something like that you need not you will not go wrong if you practice uh, one is to two is to one ratio and uh, till you reach uh, um, 15 30 15 you can safely practice then you can take the help of a yoga teacher to take you towards a next level like if you practice bastrika there also you use you do kumbhaka in between every step there will be kumbhaka you will hold the breath so this is something which we all can practice one is to two is to one ratio is a very very simple way without any confusion we all can practice inhale hold and exhale some people say that i have a pain in the neck region or in the shoulder region i can't uh, you know keep my hand like this for long duration can i change my hand yes you can change i can't sit on the, in the chair as long as you keep your back straight both my hands are paining I can't uh, hold like this or like this. What should I do? Till your hands come under your control, you can uh, directly do the inhaling with both the nostrils. Count five. Then hold it. Count ten. Exhale. Count five. That is also okay. But when you do like this, it is more effective. And one important thing is while you are doing inhaling or exhaling many people do like this like that they move their body but when you are doing practicing pranayam your back should be straight and there should not be any movement in any part of the body except your belly and chest they should expand when you are inhaling and while you are exhaling they should contract other than that there should not be any movement Like that, you need to practice. That doesn't mean that you should keep whole body stiff. No, your muscles, your joints, each one of them can stay relaxed. Particularly while you are practicing, slowly your whole body will relax. And after some time, you will see that your body becomes light. You can feel that lightness. You can feel that calmness, pleasantness inside your body and mind. And I have experienced as if I'm very, very light, just like a cotton or some feather. Of course, I have seen yogis who practice this pranayam for longer durations. And I have seen one yogi who can levitate in air. I have seen with my own eyes. Yogi practicing his pranayam and holding the breath and levitating. In fact, you take any authentic yogic text, whether it is Hatha Yoga Pradipika or Gheranda Samhita, they all speak about this levitation. They say that you need to be cautious because after practicing pranayam to a certain level, you will there will be body will be lifted up and you will fall. You need to be careful. 
without injuring your body should be careful and after some time you will be able to balance your body in air so this is all written it's not like some miracle or um, you know something only some legends or something like no it's clearly written in authentic yoga texts yoga of samhitas so my point here is if you are practicing pranayam in a right way it will help in curing so many ailments so many diseases and it if you are healthy it will improve your health both physical and mental health and it will take you to the next level where you can tap the hidden potential you can do greater things in fact i can say you can do miracles with your newly found energy it's so profound it's so effective and i can't explain these things in words you need to experience it you need to practice it i am very sure many people many of you are already practicing yoga and pranayam or some of you have started from the recent uh, international yoga day and some of you people are thinking about starting it if you are thinking about starting it this is the right time right from tomorrow morning you can start practicing pranayam at the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1 start with 5 10 5 holding the breath is the key here so you might ask me what about the other forms of pranayam where there is no holding of breath like anlom vilom anlom vilom you you inhale exhale inhale exhale you are practicing you are practicing this breath the art of breathing in a rhythmic way you are preparing your lungs your mind your body for pranayam by practicing anlom vilom what about kapal bhati kapal bhati is a rigorous way of lung exercise you can say it is lung exercise and it is also it is also a part of shat kriyas there are six detoxification processes in yoga and one is kapal bhati so you know lungs through lungs also we excrete so much of waste toxins from the body so kapal bhati is an excellent way to remove toxins from the body you forcefully exhale you take your belly and beat it upwards inwards you make a sound you make a jerk of movement in the belly like that like that like that you forcefully exhale and you will not worry about inhaling there is no inhaling part here when the when the lungs you completely squeeze the lungs and let the air out automatically they will fill themselves by out you will not put any effort to fill the lungs you will only put effort to empty the lungs and you do it longer durations 100 times 150 times 200 times continuously that is kapala bhati like this like that so this is kapala bhati this is also very useful in so many diseases it also increases our lung capacity increases our lung strength and it will prepare us for practicing actual pranayam so this is my experience with pranayam and this is what we teach all our patients particularly patients with severe degenerative diseases and we have seen miracles happening in the lives of patients who sincerely practice pranayam so maybe now i can take some doubts up because uh, this is a practical procedure and maybe i have rushed and i have told you very very fast if you have any specific doubt regarding this particular pranayam and uh, my computer is showing notification that your connection is unstable 
unstable if i am not clear or uh, you want me to repeat i can repeat or if you want me if you want to elaborate if you want me to elaborate some particular aspect i will elaborate if there are no questions then we will go to the topic and in chat window there is one question how do you differentiate between deep sleep and light sleep so in a sleep cycle there are different different steps so when there is a rapid eye movement there will be light sleep then you go to deep sleep then again you come back to light sleep again you go back to deep sleep like this cycle goes but if your question is how can we understand whether uh, the sleep which uh, last night sleep was efficient enriching nourishing or only disturbed sleep for that it is very simple you know the moment you get up if you can feel you are energetic the moment you wake up the moment you listen to alarm or the moment you listen to the voice of uh, your mom waking you up immediately if you jump out of your bed as if there is a spring behind your back pushing you out of your bed then you can feel that energy you can feel very enthusiastic energetic then your sleep is fruitful but after waking up you don't feel like getting up at all you take lot of karvate you want to sleep more but you are afraid you want to do some work you drag yourself from your bed then it is not a proper sleep it is not an enriching sleep so if that is the difference you are asking then that is the indication but if you want to know whether your partner is in deep sleep or light sleep so that you can escape for some other activity that i can not say now jvs gupta ji that is the yes sir uh, yeah there is your yes hand. doctor Th thank you thank you doctor i i got your point but the question is nowadays <clears throat> the smart watches are there yes you keep it and, and they measure your deep sleep light sleep and uh, that rem concept sir though i have got a good sleep it doesn't show deep sleep at all so i got a doubt basically what is the difference between deep sleep and uh, this one but so otherwise there, i get up yeah there are different different parameters yeah. you know the smart watch tries to measure your heart rate yeah. your pulse rate yeah you know? and uh, also it will uh, observe your movements whether you are moving like this like that or you are sleeping still and there are so many parameters it will if it is really smart it will consider many other parameters and it will decide whether you are sleeping deeply or not okay but the thing is again depending upon our depending upon our constitution for example vata prakriti people are generally light sleepers you know if you observe some people even at in the middle of the night if you just touch them they will immediately they will wake up when some people even if you pour water also they will it is very difficult to wake them up it again it depends upon the constitution so okay. their individual constitution decides how they sleep whether they move a lot or they stand still sleep still all these things that depend mostly on their constitution sometimes due to some disease some ailment this sleep pattern might change from you know into an abnormal way which is not normal to their own constitution then it will be a problem but unfortunately present generation smart watches are not designed to measure our sleep according to our own constitution we need more apps more uh, things to measure our own constitution also to understand our constitution okay thank you doctor i got the point <laughs> welcome sir. so 
if anyone is having any question regarding the pranayam part the one which i have explained is a very very simple pranayam there are so many other uh, higher levels of pranayam but the one which i have told right now is a uh, is one which we can all practice very easily without any side effects or complications so there if you have any doubt i will try to answer or if you have any other doubt you can take it we still have 9 minutes okay please once again tell doctor regarding the uh, time schedule of both levels your test 5 10 5 you told for first one yeah so the ratio is 1 is 2 is to 1 holding the yes. breath is in between so inhaling yes. breathing in holding and breathing out ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 fine so it is 5 10 5 just an example start with 5 10 5 Yes. Yes. The second level where you try to hold the breath for a longer duration, the ratio is one is to four is to two. So when you inhale, if you are counting five, you hold the breath and count twenty, and while exhaling, you count ten. It's almost double the count you counted uh, while inhaling. Yes. If you yes. Inhaling five, exhaling ten, and in between you are holding for twenty. So just imagine, you know, it's an interesting uh, phenomenon. Like normally, in a minute, normal human beings, their respiratory rate is fourteen to eighteen. It's fourteen to eighteen times they inhale and exhale while uh, they are doing uh, some activities every day, normal activities. One minute they do inspiration and expiration for fourteen to eighteen times. That's human beings' respiratory rate. in uh, on your uh, you know pulse oximeter also it shows the respiratory rate if you have some corona or some other lung problem the respiratory rate increases shallow breathing and longer uh, uh, higher count but uh, if you observe the respiratory rate of a dog it is much higher 25 to 28 times respiratory rate of a tortoise is only 5 to 8 times means in a minute it will inhale and exhale only for 5 times or maximum 8 times why it is important they say that the higher the respiratory rate the lower your life span if you are continuously taking shallow breaths and very fast more in a minute the count is more the duration of your life the life span the quality and quantity also will reduce and pranayam we are trying to bring down the respiratory rate suppose in the first level you have completed your first level you are counting 15 while you are inhaling and you count 30 while you hold the breath and you count 15 while you exhale in the almost 60 seconds only one time inspiration and expiration inhaling and exhaling happen you have you brought the respiratory rate to one only one in whole one minute only one time the respiration happened your respiratory rate is one normally it is 14 to 18 now it is one while you are practicing pranayam so when you bring down the respiratory rate the metabolic rate also comes down which means you are slowing down the aging process you are slowing down the destruction part and construction part of happening inside the body it's great thing right just by controlling your breath you are controlling your metabolic rate you are stopping you are bringing everything to a pause everything happening inside your body comes to a standstill when you are holding your breath so that is the key which can unlock so many other gifts so many health benefits it will help you tap the real potential if you practice it judiciously regularly 
you can create wonders then you don't need any doctor you know and if you can make this a habit in your family the whole family will be protected it is like a rakshana kavacha for all family whole family so i request all of you for listening this uh, session to take a decision to start practicing pranayam particularly the kumbhaka part holding the breath part just make a commitment of at least 5 minutes 5 rounds i'll do it 5 rounds 10 rounds i'll do it every day morning make a commitment do it for 15 days and see do it for one week and see tell me how it how you felt after one week i'm sure you will see a significant difference in our overall health after practicing it only for one week so if you have any other question we can take or we can close the session thank you yeah. this is all about our own self discipline this is all about practical implementation not some magic pill recommendation by someone you take this pill this will happen you take that medicine that will happen you take this diet this will happen you take this decoction this will happen no this is all about taking control over your own breath holding your breath holding your mind stand make it stand still and then everything will unfold so i wish you all the best i request you to try it once give it a try for one week And please share your experiences next week still we have 2 minutes time if you people have any query all of you are having mic with you you can unmute and put the question your query i think your session has been so informative that everybody is making mind to practice it seriously <laughs> query is only after next week yeah when people will share some experience yes what they experience uh, yes jvs gupta ji you have unmuted your mic please If yes doctor <clears throat> yeah i remember for quite some time we have followed the sudarshana kriya so there is a kriya as suggested by ravi shankar saab of bangalore art of living i i think i mean this resembles exactly the same this one uh, technique wise is it uh, okay sir yeah so generally sudarshan kriya includes uh, a rigorous practice of uh, inhalation and exhalation so hum so hum so hum so hum like that then uh, after doing a higher <laughs> count of uh, so hum so hum inhaling exhaling inhaling exhaling then you will try to bring it to a stand still so yeah. that is a special technique mm. where you take your lung capacity to have, you stretch it beyond uh, it, its limits so okay that is a beautiful technique and people have wonderful experiences after practicing sudarshan kriya regularly yeah so that is one form of uh, nice way of uh, you know controlling our breath so here the whole thing is uh, more um what we call uh, relaxed way we will do it we will okay, not force yeah. it okay so we will just inhale and uh, hold it and exhale without any force but slowly we will stretch our limits yeah day by day day by day we will try to increase the count and the focus here is on holding the breath holding the breath is the main focus okay doctor okay holding is also there sudarshan kriya can you you can compare it with bastrika which is a higher level of uh, pranayam 
Okay, okay. <clears throat> they are also holding it there, I remember. Uh, breathe in, hold it for yes, some yes. time, and then breathe out. Uh, that part also I remember yes. that we have practiced for some that time. That part is there. Uh, uh, that part is also there. Any pranayam, this part will be there. Puraka, Kumbhaka, Rechaka will be there. Okay. Then it, there it, this Soham practice will come where we do it rigorously. Then we go to a deep state of relaxation after practicing the Soham regularly. And that part is more like Bhastrika. This week came to this end of the session about pranayam. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Very enlightening uh, lecture. Not only this lecture, every lecture we follow sincerely. Because mo most of the things, I mean, we have not followed uh, in our uh, I mean, earlier days. Maybe because of the profession, because of the workload, because of the pressure of work, all these things. But now I think in my own case, I got relaxed attempt to listen to you and get to know many things, uh, how to control your own body and keep it uh, fit for a long time. The, 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 I'm very happy about the lectures. I follow, but I'm not working now, but uh, I worked as a principal in one of the polytechnic in Bangalore. Those oh. days I attended the, uh, the very first session of that. So I keep getting oh. this particular message so that I keep on attending this. I'm getting that benefit. Thank you, doctor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. It's time now here. Yeah? Should we say thank you to everyone? Yes. Yes. Thank you all the attendees. Thank you all the panelists. And thank you so much, Bhaiya. Thank you so much for your enlightening lectures every time. Every week you are helping us to lead a better life. It's at our part now that we practice it. Thank you, Bhaiya. Namaste. 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 Thank you so much. Namaste to all. Namaste, Devi. Ji, Manuji. We can go now. Okay, we can call it a day. Thank you, Didi. Namaste. Namaste to all. Namaste to all.